Hello friends, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elias and today's video is going to be an interesting one. So I haven't done a reading vlog in quite a while. I'm also, you know, in a new space. I'm figuring things out to take you guys on this journey with me because there are quite a few number of things that I'm hoping to get accomplished in a couple of days. One, do some reading and two, get some new bookshelves for my room because I had to get rid of a bookshelf and the other one I had to leave at home. So I do have more space in this room, even though they're roughly the same size to get a couple more shelves. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I'll take you guys along with me on that later. Before we get started, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Penguin Team. So they sent me a copy of this book and I will be doing a reading vlog for The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. This book is about a pandemic. And you know, I was a little hesitant at first because we are in a pandemic. However, I thought it would be insightful reading about the pandemic in a different light. So the story focuses on a young girl and her dog who try to find this mysterious, enigmatic person who lives life after life in an attempt to put the world back together. The story itself is sort of an exploration of art, storytelling, eternal life, and trying to find beauty in somewhat of a dangerous time. So I'm pretty keen and interested to see how all those themes are explored in this book. So after everything, this is a sci-fi dystopian, but it has that element that I really love to read in books, which is that whimsical speculative element. So it's actually been a really long time um, since I've actually read any dystopian or sci-fi book. I can't honestly remember the last time I've read any book in that genre. The only prominent sci-fi dystopian book that I can remember reading was probably Scythe by Neil Shusterman, which was a long time ago. Maybe this will pique my interest in sort of the sci-fi dystopian genre again. This book is out now. It came out in the beginning of February and I will leave all the links to it down below in case you guys are interested. So in the next few days, I'm just hoping to take you guys along with me on this reading journey as well as finding new bookshelves and putting the apartment together slowly. Um, but fun fact about the author, I actually own his first book, Mosquito Land. And a little backstory about this book is that this is one of the first contemporary books that I bought when I started book two. I saw this at Barnes & Noble. I believe this came out like five or six years ago. For some reason, I couldn't get rid of it. Even after all this time, there's just this sense of nostalgia. So we'll see. These are like completely two different genres. I feel like this is more of a contemporary coming of age, while this one is sort of a dystopian sci-fi element. All right, with that being said, thank you again to Penguin Teen for sending a copy my way and for sponsoring today's video. Before we get started to the reading vlog, I just want to quickly go over some of the books I read and in the middle of. So the first one, Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. So this was the February book pick for the Late Night Book Club. And I read it and I have a lot of thoughts. Be sure to tune in on Joel's channel um, where we will be discussing all the things because this book surprised me. In a good way? In a bad way? I don't know, you'll have to find out. But this is a thriller following an aspiring singer who wakes up with the blood of a dead body on her hands. So, so yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about this one. But the next book I'm actually in the middle of, and I only have like around 120 pages left, is Real Life by Brandon Taylor. This one is actually really interesting because it takes place over the course of a weekend. And this one follows a young gay black doctor who is studying in a predominantly white setting in a Midwestern university. So far, it's so interesting. And the writing style is phenomenal, so good. The book itself only takes place in a course of a couple of days. It's really short, but the way that these characters are written, how they interact with each other, and just the main character, his backstory, just his dynamic and relationships with these other students who are mostly white. Overall, I'm really excited to finish this book, but I'm taking my time because there's a lot to process and absorb, so. And without further ado, let's get started.
everyone. Just a quick update. So I am roughly like 60 pages into the book and honestly, really interesting so far. So there's some really interesting aspects about this book. So far, it's actually really interesting because the book itself doesn't read as a, I don't know, typical YA. I think it's a, a little more mature, a lot older. Also, the aspect revolving around the pandemic itself, I would say it's more like, it reminds me of Bird Box or um, something creature related, like A Quiet Place, for an example. This revolves around a swarm of flies that sort of go for the marrow bone. Um, in animals, humans, and whatnot. This sort of follows a multitude of characters and not just a single character that I thought. It's very pragmatic, but in a good way. I think it's taking itself very seriously, which I think is an upgrade from the other sci-fi dystopian books that I read about two teenagers, you know, falling in love while trying to save the world. This isn't really like that. It's more grounding, I think. While the book does have a really strong element of, you know, dystopian and apocalyptic, it has a bigger element of being really analytical and theoretical. I don't know if that makes any sense, but so far it's surprising in a way where it doesn't typically follow the main structure of the YA dystopian that I thought I would read about, you know, that I'm used to, like, you know, for like Divergent or The Hunger Games. In a way, it's just more visually artistic with its story form and structure. And that's one of the few things I really appreciate about it. I'm curious and interested to see what happens next. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Alright guys, hello. So, quick update. We're on roughly 116 pages in, and so far this book is so weird, but in a good way. It's it's just hard to explain. I think that, how do I explain this? I think the wildest way that the story is structured is just really intriguing to me. It's very atmospheric in the way it tells um, its stories through these characters. And most of these characters are really young. I believe we follow an 18 year old and a couple of teenagers and this child and this other person called the Deliverer. We follow these five characters, some of whom are together and they are all trying to reach this safe haven. The way that they're trying to reach the safe haven, it's just really strange and whimsical through these visions or through something that another person has seen. So it's very cryptic overall this whole book. It's very whimsical, but very cryptic at the same time which I'm here for. Plan for the rest of the night is probably read, I would say 50 to 100 more pages and we'll call it a night. And so the next day we'll be going to Ikea to get bookshelves. So see you then. Making a fool of ourselves at Ikea.
Hello everyone. Um, so it's been a couple of days since I last updated you guys. So yesterday I went to Ikea and set up some bookshelves and that feeling, that feeling of accomplishment when you finally get most of your books out or practically all of your books out of the boxes onto the shelves. I finally have all of my books that I wanted to keep on my shelves. There are some books I'm, I'm planning on giving away and essentially I'm going to be making a Depop where I'll post pictures of the books I no longer want. That's gonna happen. I don't know when, but it'll happen. I'm pretty happy with the current setup. However, there's a complete lack of organization on my shelves in general. Genres are switched up. Series are out of order. I don't know when I will be doing a reorganization video, but just the process and everything that goes into it, it's just, it's gonna be a day. So I'm actually 300 pages in into the book. And honestly, it is so much better than I initially thought. And it just has a lot to do with the overall sense of profound loss and human connection and exploration of art and beauty within, you know, human lives and how we view things. It's just honestly really beautiful. It's almost in a way bringing me back to my roots, why I love and appreciate YA so much. And I have forgotten how pivotal and incredible YA can be. So I'm really happy where this book is going so far. I'm not sure how it'll end. I do have some theories in my mind as to, you know, some reveals and everything, but we'll see. Pretty much have around 120 pages left. So um, I'll probably complete that today and give you guys my overall thoughts and impressions at the end. You know how I mentioned earlier where I said this book follows like different multitude of characters and different ages? Well, you're sort of following these different characters. However, you're reading about two main POVs and their interactions with other humans and everything. I'm really loving them. I really like their relationships together and all their connections. It's just really wholesome to read um, how they're interacting with others and especially how they're surviving during a pandemic, you know? Something akin to what we're doing, and how we're feeling about it and everything like that. So 100% relatable. Overall, a fantastic read. So I'm excited to see how this ends and I will update you guys on that later. Also, just wanted to share with you guys, um, yesterday, Aside from going to Ikea, we also went to Target, where I picked up A Court of Silver Frames. A Court of Silver Frames. A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. It's been a while, I guess, since I've read a Sarah J. Mass book. I guess the last book I read was the one everyone read, which was Crescent City, her latest release. So this is the fourth book in the Akatar universe following a different sister. I'm really curious and keen to see where this goes, even though, did we really need another sequel? I mean, that's relative and subjective to your own opinion. But I'm curious and intrigued to know more about this world because I really enjoyed reading the other books. I don't know, personally for me, having a cover change like this, it just makes it more mature, I guess, element-wise. She thick, and I'm really excited to dive in. I probably won't be reading this for the month of February. I might hold off to read this during the month of March or even April because I just have a lot of things on my plate recently. So just want to share that little tidbit with you guys. So I have quite a few things I want to say about this book. This book, already, 100% underrated. I am so happy that I was able to read this book and enjoy the ever-living heck out of it. It was phenomenal. It was so, so good. The ending, I sort of predicted a few things, but there were a lot of surprises that came through. So I have some notes that I wrote down. So I said it's sort of Middle Game by Sean McGuire meets John Green, in a way. Because if John Green wrote an apocalyptic sci-fi dystopian book, this will be it. It's pretentious without having the pretentiousness surrounding it, if that makes any sense. There are just so many elements of this book that I really, really liked. Some of those elements include speculative fantasy um, that takes place in the real world. Even though it has a dystopian apocalyptic approach to it, it didn't really feel that way in a heavy-handed aspect. If I had to give you a really vague descriptive of what this book made me feel, it was like, it's like a panoramic view of looking 
through a kaleidoscope. You know, one of those little toys, you know, it's really tiny, you're looking through a telescope, but expand that, you know, like on your iPhone, you're allowed to take a really wide photo of your surroundings. This book was like that for me. It was really encompassing and utterly so profound in ex expression, exploration of human connection and how humans and beauty overall and how we can utilize that to its fullest potential. It was honestly really beautiful to read and this book was really emotional. I thought I would get a really straightforward sci-fi dystopian approach because in the end it surprised me and it took a totally different approach to telling its story, its structure. So most of the chapters in this book are really short which is really nice to read from because you always have to find out what happens next. The writing was actually really good. It kept me engaged all throughout. It had this element of being philosophical without it being too pretentious or in your face in a way. You can sort of understand the gist of things without understanding the whole picture. Again, it's just very metaphorical and so vague, but you sort of understand its outline, its core. So there were heavy themes of storytelling and time and how those themes were used or explored, I really liked. There's a smaller theme of found family, but overall, I just loved how David Arnold wove everything, all those themes together um, to tell the story. I feel like this is the type of book that a lot of people won't expect. But going into it, it's just going to be a huge, fulfilling reward, an escalation of sorts, but in a good way. If you really like quiet and unassuming books that really tell a profound story that has really likable characters and somewhat really emotional, I would highly recommend this book. I am so glad that I read this and I know for a fact that it'll stick with me for a really long time, you know, thinking about it and everything. I would say this book is less being in a pandemic and more about that human connection. So overall, 10 out of 10, 4, 4.5 out of 5, um, highly recommend. I guess that's pretty much all I want to say about this in a really vague and non-spoiler aspect review. So yeah, this could be potentially the top 10 of my 2021 books we'll see. This book is already out, came out in the beginning of the month, and I will leave a link to it down in the description box where you can order your own copy. It's a definite recommend for me, and I can already tell this book is going to be pretty much underrated. So I want to give a huge thank you to Penguin Teen for sending this my way and for sponsoring today's video. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching guys, and I will see you guys all soon with the new video. With the blood of some... with the blood... With the blood of some dead person? With the blood of somebody... With the blood of somebody dead. This is about an aspiring singer named Enchanted, a young... So this is about an aspiring singer named Enchanted, an aspiring singer... This is about an aspiring singer named Enchanted who wakes up with the blood of someone else's dead... With the blood of someone else's dead body. With the blood of a dead body in our hands. With the blood of a dead body. I, I'm actually... It's, 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 it's almost in a way bringing... Without... You know, philo uh, philosophical, without it being too, you know, in, in a structure. But, but ultimately, it surprised me. But ultimately, it surprised me because it didn't. It went a to But ultimately, it surprised me because it went in a totally different... But in the end, this... But in the end, it surprised me because it did do that. And it... Because in the end, it surprised...